of 11 wins, one loss, and one draw. Peter Zimborn, Brandon Berry coming to you from the House of Blues in Boston for our next fight tonight. Eight rounds scheduled for the New England Welterweight Championship, a vacant title as Dorchester resident Michael McLaughlin, originally from Donegal, Ireland, takes on Meriden, Connecticut's Shaka Moore. We last saw Shaka Moore winning an upset decision over Chris Gilbert of Vermont. Can he pull the upset again tonight against the Boston-based Irishman fighting on St. Patrick's Day weekend here at the House of Blues in Boston. If you're an Irish fighter, I can't think of a better scenario for a place for you to compete than here on St. Patrick's Day weekend in Boston. McLaughlin enters this fight with a record of 11 wins, one loss, and one draw. His one loss came to Antonio Chavez Fernandez, who we saw earlier tonight. That was early on in his career in a four-rounder. Tonight's bout is scheduled for eight rounds. Shaka Moore enters this fight with a record of 12 wins, 21 losses, and three draws. He has fought anybody and everybody for many years. He's an experienced gym veteran, an experienced ring veteran. Shaka Moore, there's really not much you can do to make him uncomfortable in there. It's a very interesting matchup. I've been looking forward to watching this. I follow Shaka online, and his training seems to be um, you know, at a higher level than it normally is in his previous fights. Coming off a big win over Chris Gilbert, obviously his confidence is through the roof. I think that he's finally uh, you know, able to show some people what he's capable of. I also saw that he got some training and sparring with um, current undefeated world champion Danny Garcia. Um, so we'll see how far that work has gone and see what he can do here tonight. And it's Shaka Moore wearing the shiny red trunks with the gold trim. McLaughlin wearing the white trunks with the trim in the colors of the Irish flag. Shaka Moore all fired up for this bout. Really seemed rejuvenated after the win over Chris Gilbert. Prior to the fight with Chris Gilbert, I actually put up a pretty respectable performance at Mohegan Sun last year in a losing effort to Edwin Soto. I think the good performance against Edwin Soto, compounded with the upset win over Gilbert, has given him a renewed sense of confidence as he enters this fight against Mick McLaughlin. But it's Mick McLaughlin getting the better of the action here in round one so far. And that was... Uh, that was a punch on the top of Moore's head, which I thought caused him to force to keep himself upright by putting his gloves in the canvas, but apparently no one else in the arena seems to think that because no one else is saying anything about it but me. Kind of looked like McLaughlin landed a punch and was leaning on him pretty hard. And but McLaughlin not. is a southpaw, and we've got a clash of heads. Does that mean in five fights tonight of seven we've had a southpaw competitor? Unbelievable. And he is cut, McLaughlin's cut over the eye or somewhere on the forehead from the headbutt. Both fighters shook it up over this headbutt. Um, and what a shame if this fight has an ending from a headbutt. Poor Mick McLaughlin. We had a fight against Raphael Francis where Raphael Francis was DQ'd 60 seconds into the round. They will let the action resume. Up until then, McLaughlin was landing some very hard punches uh, to Shaka. So uh, we'll see if he can pick up where he left off. This is not the same Shaka that we saw in Melrose against Chris Gilbert, but this isn't Chris Gilbert either. Yeah, Chris Gilbert more of a straight-ahead brawler. McLaughlin more slick. You know what's interesting about McLaughlin and Shaka Moore? This can be said about both fighters. They have times where they show up looking sharp and in control, and they have times they show up looking flat. Tonight, McLaughlin looks like the sharp fighter thus far. In the corner of McLaughlin is his trainer, Martin Grealish. 
But maybe more significantly, given the way this first round has gone, is the cut man is Mark Vaz. He's worked cuts for fighters like Glenn Johnson, Juan Carlos Gomez in his world title challenge against Vitaly Klitschko. A very experienced cut man. As Shakamore actually landed a left hand towards the end of that round, that was probably the best shot that landed in the entire round. I would give that round to McLaughlin. I'm in agreement with you. However, it was very convenient of Shaka Moore to finish the round with that left hand that was the hardest shot of the round. The Wild Rover is playing between rounds, and the crowd here at House of Blues seems to enjoy it. It is starting to look like a concert here in the crowd as it is set up that way. The crowd's going to be very upset they don't get the clap again. Are they going to do it? Some people still clapped anyways. Round two of a scheduled eight-rounder for the New England Welterweight Championship. A title that has been vacant. The last fighter to hold it was Derek Silvera who has not fought in a few years. Therefore, the title has become vacant. Shaka Moore eligible to fight for the title based on his win against Chris Gilbert a few months back. And McLaughlin, despite hailing from Donegal, Ireland, eligible to fight for it since he lives in Dorchester and pretty much all of his fights for the past several years have happened here in Massachusetts. If Shaka Moore can start to tie McLaughlin with that left hand that he landed towards the end of round one, that was the left hand he landed with great regularity against Chris Gilbert and Melrose a few months back that earned him an upset win. I remember him landing that punch a lot that night. Shaka looked extremely well versus Chris Gilbert. And we should note that we had Gilbert winning the fight broadcasting it. However, we were also noting during the broadcast that Shaka Moore was making some rounds very interesting and difficult to score and was able to earn the win. Yeah, you couldn't argue with the decision on that. It was very close for it. Laughlin's fighting a pretty smart fight here. I think he knows he's in there with a uh, pretty tough competitor, and he's keeping his distance, trying to pick his punches and stay moving. I don't think he wants to let a guy like Shaka get going and start to feel comfortable at all. And we have to acknowledge that Shaka Moore, despite not having the greatest of records, a significant step up in the level of opposition for Mick McLaughlin. And McLaughlin's level of opposition to this point not a result of him being particularly choosy or picky about his opponents, just circumstances dictated him to fight some oddballs in there. I think he's had two, two victories over... Uh, Paulo de Souza. I knew where you are going yes, with that. Yes, that's right. And, uh, you and know, the and first thing you think to yourself, was there any reason for a rematch? And the only reason was that his original opponent fell out at the weigh-in, and de Souza was there, licensed and ready, and said, I'll do it again. And... To his credit, I, I, I think I remember him having a pretty good first round. Until McLaughlin stopped him in round two. That was a fight at Club Royale here in Boston, formerly known as the Roxy. And another clash of heads between Shaka Moore and McLaughlin. So far, this fight is not quite the way Shaka Moore intended to be. He's going to have to make some adjustments after, I believe, dropping the first two rounds. I'm making a petition that in between rounds, from here on out, they play nothing but traditional Irish songs. We don't need pop rock from the 80s, no. We need the Black Velvet Band in Fields of Athen Rye. 
That's what the crowd would enjoy. Round three between Michael McMaglaughlin and Shaka Moore. And a right hand from McLaughlin, or so I thought, put Shaka Moore down. Referee Leo Gerstel indicates it's a slip, and Shaka Moore's body language indicated that it was a slip as well. Perhaps their feet got tied up. Which wouldn't surprise me considering the Southpaw Orthodox matchup is a nice right hand grazes the face of McLaughlin. Moore is uh, landing a couple shots here. Fighters exchanging jabs here in the center of the ring. I think Shaka Moore is finding some confidence here in round three. Seems to be much more comfortable in there. By the way, good job by the corner of McLaughlin. Just gonna say that. that cut has not played a factor in this fight at all following the first round. Nice head movement by Shaka. Wild swing and a miss by Laughlin. I think Shaka Moore's winning this round. I do too. I think he's landing the cleaner punches. He's coming forward, setting the pace. This is the Shaka Moore that I remember seeing in Melrose against Chris Gilbert. It just took him two rounds to find that Shaka Moore, and conveniently for him, we've got an eight round fight. And, um, you know, it may have been from the clash of heads, too. Shook him up a little bit. It may have been from the locker rooms being cold and he couldn't warm up properly. Uh, but either way, he, he is here now. Landed a very nice body shot. And McLaughlin is doing the right thing, trying to stay by that jab. But his punches are getting wider, which isn't going to serve him that well against a guy like Moore. You know, he's slippery as it is. Both fighters do have to be careful, and a oh. left hand by Shaka Moore as the bell sounds wobbles McLaughlin. A definitive way to end round three for Shaka Moore. Especially when we had him winning that round anyway. So I've got this fight two rounds to one on my scorecard for Michael McLaughlin, but a big round three for Shaka Moore, and it did appear that McLaughlin was wobbled towards the end of round three. Let's see if he was able to shake out the cobwebs in between rounds, or if not, can Shaka Moore capitalize on a big round three here in round four? And Shaka Moore looks noticeably more comfortable in the ring. Moore looking very patient. McLaughlin getting active. Hopefully Moore is in, uh, in the mindset of landing that one big punch. Uh, you know, that, that was created off uh, the game plan that he was using in the last round. I think he needs to stick right back to that and just wait for his openings.
Big right hand by McLaughlin. It was big in that it was wide, but didn't really seem to do too much damage to Moore. More so grazed uh, the right cheekbone. Another headbutt. And this time Shaka Moore complaining of the headbutt, but it looks like McLaughlin is parring at his cut as well. That's on the opposite, is it it's the opposite eye, isn't it? I think it might be. I think so. He was cut on the left eye before, and now they're looking at his right eye. Imagine if he was cut over both eyes due to accidental headbutts. I, th I think he may be. They're going to let it go, and uh, Moore is... The fight might be over, and it appears that it is. It's over. That and is... since it was the, f I, I think that was round four, right? Yeah, so what one of two things is going to happen here: That's either awful. it's a no contest because four rounds are not completed, or because it was in round four, they might score a partial round in round four. And I if that's the no case, contest. if that's the case, you get two rounds from McLaughlin in rounds one and two. Round three clearly was more. And if you do score round four as a partial round, call it even because essentially nothing happened. I'm hoping that it's a no contest and both these guys get to fight again. That is, uh, I feel horrible for both fighters as uh, an opportunity for a good fight up short. Ladies and gentlemen, on the advice of Dr. Boris Burgos, due to an accidental clash of heads and sparks and cut over Michael McLaughlin's eye, the contest is stopped, and since we did not go past four completed rounds and it's about ended in the third round, this bout is declared a no contest. So a no contest, unfortunate for Michael McLaughlin, who's had some weird results like that in his career. However, that was an interesting fight for as long as it went. I wouldn't mind seeing it again, Brandon. I was just going to say, I mean, a rematch is really the only way to settle this. Uh, because what goes on for here for Shaka Moore, I mean, his last fight was still a big win. You really can't count this for anything. So, I mean, this is his opportunity, and they, they should give it to him again. Maybe in their show... Uh, it's not like they're doing one in May. And, uh, well, a no contest between Michael McLaughlin and Shaka Moore. The New England welterweight title is still vacant. Perhaps they'll have to fight again and decide upon who is the New England welterweight champion.